Bruce, thank you very much indeed. And uh, again, can I say good morning and welcome both to London and to the Paralympics of 2012. And as Sir Bruce said, I'm here today partly with my Foreign Office hat on, but more particularly because for the last 20 years, I've represented the parliamentary constituency of Aylesbury, which includes within it Stoke Mandeville Hospital. And I know you'll be going up shortly. I, I wish I could be coming with you, but uh, sadly, I have the delights of a parliamentary debate on the Euro and the European Stability Mechanism to attend to later today. I think I know where I would rather be. Um, but I'm delighted to see uh, Anne Eden, the Chief Executive of the um, Buckinghamshire NHS Trust here this morning. And I know that David Griffiths from the National Spinal Cord Injury Centre and Martin McElhatton, the Chief Executive of Wheelpower, are looking forward very much to welcoming you to Stoke in a, a couple of hours' time. And I'm immensely proud of the hospital and of the uh, Gutman Stadium and uh, Wheelpower and uh, what they do for disabled sport. You'll see that for yourself later today, and in particular, I hope you'll take advantage of the opportunity to talk to some of the amazing, dedicated medical staff who use both their skill, but also very considerable reserves of patience to help people who have been severely injured come to terms with their disability and to live with and make the very best that they can of life despite those injuries and conditions. The National Spinal Cord Injuries Centre at Stoke Mandeville is the oldest and the largest spinal injury centre anywhere in the world. It was founded back in 1944 to treat servicemen with spinal cord injuries from World War II by the neurologist Professor Sir Ludwig Gutmann, and it is a quite incredible place. I think it will move and enthrall you. And the place of Gutmann and the place of Stoke Mandeville is now legendary in the history of the Paralympics. And I've been very pleased that every time I've heard Seb Kerr or Boris Johnson or others talk about the Paralympics in the last few weeks, they have mentioned Ludwig Gutmann, they've mentioned Stoke Mandeville there, and we really have got a sense of the Paralympics coming home this year. One word of warning for those of you who may have seen the very moving, very good uh, TV drama about Ludwig Gutmann and Stoke Mandeville a few weeks ago, the one word of warning I give is that the rather shoddy 1940s, I think probably 30s, isolation units that he was dealing with were a lot less palatial than the grand building that the television cameras had. Um, but the key to what Gutmann did is that he began to use sport as part of the rehabilitation program of patients who were war veterans who were active young men who'd suffered devastating spinal injuries. And he was convinced that making them more active would not only help restore their physical capabilities as far as could be done, but would help re-motivate them after suffering serious injury. And he encouraged patients, as Bruce said, to concentrate on what they could do, not what they could not do. And if we look back to when he arrived at Stoke Mandeville, he was working against a backdrop of prejudice from a general public opinion, which believed that people with spinal cord injuries could never be reintegrated into society, and a medical profession, which I think, if we're honest with ourselves, at the time, tended to view working with paraplegics as something of a futile cause, and too often the expectation was you could put them in a plaster cast, pump them full of morphine, and they might survive for a matter of weeks or months, particularly in uh, wartime circumstances, um, where the spinal injuries unit was sort of last in line as far as receiving scarce medical equipment and uh, drugs was concerned. And that was where things were. And one of the, rem the remarkable thing about Ludwig Gutmann 
is this man you know, arrived as a refugee uh, from Germany, and his family got out just in time. Um, and he, by sh really sheer willpower, forced medical colleagues, hospital administrators, military authorities, and eventually wider opinion to accept that these people who had been injured were nonetheless capable of playing an active and productive and fulfilled part of life in our society. And he set up the first inter-centre sports tournament at Stoke Mandeville. It was an archery contest between Stoke Mandeville and another spinal cord injury centre to coincide with the London Olympic Games in 1948. By 1952, international competitors had started to come and interest developed from there. That was the beginnings of the modern Paralympic Games. By 1984, more than 1,000 athletes from 41 countries were competing in 14 different sports. And the 1980s ended on a high note for the Paralympics movement. The, uh, the Koreans decided for the Games in Seoul that the Paralympics should be treated as truly parallel with the Olympic Games themselves. And so the Paralympics were staged on the same scale and lines as the Olympic Games for the first time. Now this year in London, the athletes are performing in front of sellout crowds and the public will benefit from knowledge and insight provided by sustained and considered media coverage. It's the biggest and I believe the best Paralympics ever. Nearly two and a half million tickets have already been sold, more than in any previous Paralympic Games. And there are more athletes from more countries than ever before. And one of the things that's been heartening is to see the crowd not just cheering the British competitors, which I would certainly hope and expect they would do, but for example, you know, example the, you know, the one competitor from Djibouti who was here, coming in last in his event, but finishing the course and being cheered to the echo by the crowds in so doing. And I, one of our hopes for the Paralympics in London is that they will encourage people in those countries where disability is still too often regarded as something to be kept out of sight, that there is now, it is now time for a shift in public culture. So it's an incredible story. We're very proud in this country of our record in the Paralympic Games. And today you'll see at Stoke Mandeville some of the reasons why our athletes have been winning more medals than might be expected given the size of our population. The success of the British Paralympic team has been built around discovering and nurturing talent and in providing the tools to compete successfully. And technological innovations, a great many of which have been developed in the United Kingdom, give our athletes a cutting edge. And beyond the world of sport, British innovation and ingenuity in assistive technologies have made real differences to people's lives, enabling men and women to reclaim levels of mobility and of dexterity, which might have seemed unattainable. And this is all something much better observed in practice than simply talked about from platforms. And today around Lancaster House, you will see some fantastic examples of innovative British products. And at Stoke Mandeville, in a little while, you'll have the chance to view some of our state-of-the-art rehabilitation equipment and systems in practice. You'll see how technology, built around and tailored to the needs of the user, can make all the difference, whether in enabling people to live independently or helping an athlete to achieve peak performance. And you'll see how we work with people, empowering them to get up and get moving, and see, in, at root, how the attitudes that Sir Ludwig Gutmann espoused have taken root and have flourished. And you'll see how extraordinarily powerful this shift in attitudes can be, especially when it is allied to technological innovation. Britain has always been a trailblazer 
for promoting rights for disabled people. And it's a cause that has been championed by people in all the mainstream political parties. As long ago as 1970, we introduced the first legislation for disabled rights anywhere in the world, the product of years of campaigning, chiefly by a Labour MP, Alf Morris, who sadly died just a few weeks ago. Later, our current Foreign Secretary, William Hague, as Minister for Disabled People in John Major's government, was responsible for taking through the first comprehensive disability discrimination legislation in the United Kingdom. And today the government continues to promote positive attitudes towards disabled people, encourages independence and tries to focus on what people can do rather than what they can't. And the Paralympic Games will demonstrate just how far the UK has come since Ludwig Gutmann first came to these shores and started battling against the odds on behalf of his patients at Stoke Mandeville. I hope I've given you just a, a, a taste for what you will experience, what you will talk, be able to talk about during the course of today. Thank you again for coming. Do enjoy the day, particularly do enjoy your visit to my constituency, and I hope very much that you will see at the end of today that, as uh, Stephen Green and Bruce Keogh have said, the UK regards itself as a trailblazer, as a leader when it comes to assistive technologies suitable for the aspirations of our disabled men and women in the modern world, and that we are a good trading partner, a good place for inward investment, and we look forward to working with all of you in the months and years to come. Thank you very much.